Hello and welcome to the Reef Talk Extra channel. Now I dose Kalkwasser on my saltwater aquariums because it is very, very cheap indeed. It's easy to use and it boosts pH in my tanks, which makes my corals look healthy and grow more quickly. And I currently have three tanks that I run Kalkwasser on, a 10 gallon LPS tank, a 40 gallon LPS tank, and a 100 gallon SPS tank. And actually I do things ever so slightly different on all three of those tanks. So today I'm gonna to show you how I run Kalkwasser on all of my reef tanks. I'm gonna talk you through the container I use, how I dose it to the aquarium, what time I dose it, what I do for things like trace elements and magnesium, and basically everything you need to know to get started and work out how to dose Kalkwasser on your tank. We're going to start with the nano tank then, let's take a look. All right, so the first tank is the most simple setup in terms of Kalkwasser. This is a 53 litre, uh, 13 and a half gallon Fluval Evo 13.5. Just zoom out so you can see the whole thing. And Kalkwasser then, container. It's a glass bottle, that's it. <laughs> Got this off eBay. Uh, it holds about half a litre um, and that lasts me about two weeks. As you can see, it's almost out now, so I need to top it up. So every fortnight I'll add just two grams of Kalkwasser in there, or maybe not even that, give it a bit of a shake with some new water, and then it's done. I dose the Kalkwasser via the dosing line using a single dosing pump. This is a refactory, I think it's just called a refactory dosing pump. Single head, just does one, but you can use any, and this is the beauty of this setup, you can use any dosing pump you need whatsoever, and it doesn't have to be a continuous duty dosing pump because I'm hardly dosing any per day. And as you can see, the tubing, the dosing tube goes up there all the way into here and it doses, move that out of the way, it doses out there. And the reason that it doses there is because there is a power head just down there and it's important, and also this is where the return pumps come out, it's really important with Kalkwasa to dose into a high flow area wherever possible. So that's where the Kalkwasa comes out. So in terms of how much I dose then, I said that container that's half a litre lasts me uh, two weeks. I dose at the moment 30 millilitres per day. Now Kalkwasa is restricted, the amount of Kalkwasa you can dose is restricted by the amount of, evap of water, you, fresh water you lose to evaporation. And on this tank I lose quarter of a litre per day to evaporation. Cat's just about to come up and jump on my notes. Let's move them out in that way. So I lose about a quarter of a litre per day to evaporation on this tank. And at the moment with, I don't know, seven or eight stony corals in there, I hardly dose anything at all, 30 millilitres a day. I dose that overnight. What's my dosing period? 8 p.m. is when it starts. 12 p.m. midday the next day is when it finishes. And the dosing pump just doses, I don't know, three millilitres every hour or something along those lines. And that's it. I don't do anything to measure pH. I don't have a pH probe. I don't even test pH. There's just, with this little amount of Kalkwasser and this small volume of water, there's no danger of a pH spike as far as I'm concerned. So I don't do anything to monitor it. I couldn't even tell you what the pH is, but I can tell you that it almost certainly is higher than it would be if I weren't using Kalkwasser. Uh, the corals are looking really healthy at the moment. Uh, they're growing relatively slowly, but I've only put them in recently, so it's a little bit too soon to say, but they look fantastic, and for me, that's the main thing. And the other beauty of this is that I'm not dosing anything else at all. So I'm not dosing magnesium, I'm not dosing any trace elements, nothing like that. I do a 20% water change, which is about eight or 10 liters uh, once a week, and that is it. I don't dose anything else apart from Kalkwasa, and because I use about a gram of Kalkwasa per fortnight, it is effectively free because a gram of Kalkwasser is literally less than a penny, I bet. It's effectively free to replenish calcium and alkalinity on this tank and to keep the pH nice and high so the corals look nice and healthy. So if you've ever thought that Kalkwasser was too complicated, this tank is a fantastic example of how easy it can be. Small dosing bottle, single head dosing pump, job done. All right, next tank then is the 40 gallon. This is, it holds about 40 gallons of water, 150 litres, and this is a water box frag 55.2. So it's two foot front to back, two foot across, and 16 inches tall. On this then, I dose Kalkwasser from, again, just a big old container. This container holds about 30 litres. That's the line of Kalkwasser in there. Uh, and it lasts, oh, it lasts a month, I reckon. I dose, how much do I dose? 
I currently dose 650 milliliters per day, so that 25, 30 liter vat lasts absolutely ages. And I dose it via a Ecotech Versa continuous duty dosing pump. And on this tank, because I'm dosing quite a lot of liquid, I think it's better to use a continuous duty dosing pump. Possibly not necessary, but probably necessary. And the reason this isn't turning at the moment is because it is not currently dosing because it is finished for the day. So this pulls water in, sorry, this pulls Kalkwasser in here and it pushes it out there and up into the tank. And on this one, remember I said you needed to have a high flow area of water. That is where the Kalkwasser drips out, right into the weir box. So it goes right down the drain straight away, which is about the most turbulent point of the entire tank. And one thing I'd like to say there, you can't really see any kind of buildup, no Kalkwasser, no crust at all. The bits that you can see around here, white stuff, that's just salt. There's no Kalkwasser crust whatsoever. And I've been dosing calc on this tank for almost a year, so it doesn't have to be as messy as it can be. On this tank then, I dose it with the Ecotech Versa continuously, so it constantly drips a tiny amount, so it's nice and smooth, and I'm at no danger of getting any spikes whatsoever. And on this tank, I also dose from 8 p.m. at night to 12 p.m. midday the next day, and I lose roughly 1.2, 1.5 litres, about a quarter of a gallon, maybe a bit more, of fresh water to evaporation per day. So that means I currently, I'm currently dosing about 50% of the maximum calcuasser I can, because of course, if I'm losing 1.2 litres of fresh water to evaporation per day, I can only add a maximum of 1.2 litres of calcuasser. But even with all of these corals, I only need half of that. So there is loads of headroom, loads of space for me to grow, loads of space for the corals to grow, and I still won't need to add anything other than calcuasser. With that being said, on this tank, I do dose something else. It is not magnesium, and I've done ICP tests. Magnesium has been spot on. On this tank, I also dose manganese. This is just Triton manganese. I had one milliliter of the stuff per day. That just goes into the sump down there. It doesn't really matter where it, where it adds. And I dose manganese on this tank because it is LPS dominated, and LPS seem to really like manganese, particularly things like gonioporas, uh, of which I have many. And they seem to absolutely thrive with even a small amount of manganese. So on this tank then, I dose calcuasser and manganese, that is it. No magnesium, no trace elements. I do do again, probably about a 10 or 15% water change once a week. But apart from that, I don't do anything to replenish any other elements. Now on this tank, I do monitor pH, although I've recently turned my pH probe off because it doesn't really change much. And on this tank, it goes from about 8.15 to about 8.25, 8.3 over the course of 24 hours. So a really small swing, and it almost peaks at around 8.3, which is brilliant and exactly what you want in terms of a pH level, and it doesn't dip below 8.1, which is absolutely fantastic. Now I was using an expensive 250 odd quid uh, pH probe to monitor pH, but I've now got to the point where I don't need it. I can't tell you what it is at this exact moment. All I do know is that it is keeping my pH nice and high without being too high, and as far as I can see, there's no danger of this causing any problems. The only time it would be a real issue would be if the Ecotech Versa suddenly decided to go crazy and dump all 25 litres of Kalkwasser into the tank at the same time, or even you know a few litres at the same time would probably cause a problem. But I've never seen a dosing pump get stuck on, certainly not an Ecotech Versa, so I don't think there's any problem or any risk with there whatsoever that's worth considering. On this tank, my alkalinity sits at about eight, and my magnesium, last time I tested it, was 1260, both of which are absolutely perfect. And now here we are at my main tank, and this is probably, well it is, the most complicated setup for Kalkwasser that I have. Uh, because I run a Kalkwasser stir and not just calc in a tub, uh, and I also dose a few other things. So let's get stuck into the sump, and take a look and see how I run it. Right, so. I used to have a, uh, a Kalkwasser tub, a container, just like I did on my other tanks, whereby it was, it was enormous, it was 100 litres, which is 25 gallons, it was huge, it lasted about a month, but it just took up so much space. So I switched to a Kalkwasser stirrer, and this is, it's about a two litre or half gallon tube, so it takes up way less space, and it basically does the same thing. I'll link a video at the top corner uh, of, the, of a description of what a Kalkwasser stirrer is, but effectively, 
you have all of this undissolved calcwasa at the bottom. The, t the stir bar stirs it so it keeps it suspended and then you feed it uh, fresh water from your RO top off and then it mixes the, uh, the calcwasa into here so this always stays at 100% strength. Now, the calcwasa stirrer then I have set up so you can see down here there is a power head there that uh, blasts uh, at the outlet which means that it keeps it nice and mixed, keeps it nice and stirred as in the new calcwasa when it doses into the tank and where I used to dose it, I used to get this massive crust. This is when I just had it in a container before my Calcuasa stirrer days. I used to get this massive crust, and I've, <laughs> I've cleaned this back quite a lot. Massive crust of Calcuasa gunk, and I don't get that anymore. There's a tiny little patch there, but it's, uh, it's much, much better, partly because I'm dosing right into a power head. Now I feed this with fresh water. This is, let's follow the dosing tube. The dosing tube, is connected to an Ecotech Versa. And you can see that, that is turning very slowly indeed. So that doses, that's a continuous duty dosing pump and it doses over, what time have I got it from? 8.30 p.m. which is when my lights are at their peak and are just starting to ramp down until uh, 11 a.m. which is when my lights are starting to ramp up in the morning. This is my freshwater reservoir nothing particularly exciting in there. In fact, it's almost empty, I need to top it up. So it draws water from the freshwater reservoir uh, via the, uh, the Versa dosing pump, puts it in here, that then injects it into the bottom of the stirrer and pushes it out the top and you can see it will drip out the bottom there. There you go, you can just about see it dripping out very, very slowly. Go on, fella. All right, maybe you can't, but it is, you can't see it on camera, but it is dripping out of there. Uh, anyway, so that's the Calcuasa stirrer, and that I dose, so I lose, evaporation-wise, I lose about three and a half to four litres per day, so just under a gallon per day of fresh water to evaporation, and I currently dose 3.2 litres of Calcuasa per day, um, because I want there to be some slight headroom, meaning that if for whatever reason my uh, evaporation is slightly less during one day, it won't mean that I'll put too much fresh water in. And at this point, it's worth mentioning that I do still run an auto top off on all of these tanks, a tonsy osmolator, and it just comes on less frequently than it would do if I weren't dosing Calcuasa. For example, on this tank, I dose about 3.2 litres of Calcuasa per day, and I lose about 3.5 litres of fresh water to evaporation per day, which means that the Calcuasa takes care of most of my fresh water top up, but the auto top off still comes on a couple of times a day just to take care of that last 10 or 20%. Now on this tank, I do monitor pH, and it is currently in the morning, and in fact, the demo lights <laughs> that I put on uh, for the purposes of this video have just turned off. It's currently in the morning, it's about, uh, what time is it? Nine o'clock uh, a.m., and my pH is at 8.2, more or less. Uh, and the pH on this tank tends to sit between 8.2 and 8.4, uh, roughly there or thereabouts. Uh, it might go up or down a, a little tiny bit. And what I found is that when I was dosing Calcuasa 24-7, my pH swing was about 0.3 or 0.4, whereas when I started dosing Calcuasa overnight, my pH swing dropped down to about 0.2. So it's a much smoother uh, pH drop overnight if you're dosing Calcuasa overnight only versus if you dose it 24-7. What I would say though is I've noticed zero difference in my tank, uh, no matter whether I've been dosing it 24-7 or overnight. Now that doesn't mean that it's not making a difference, it might be that I'm just not noticing it, but either way, I don't think it's worth stressing about too much, and I've found that my alkalinity, for what it's worth, I monitor that regularly with a, an alkalinity monitor, my alkalinity was much smoother when I was dosing 24-7, and it's a little bit more up and down, it fluctuates by about half a DKH per day, now I'm dosing Calcuasa overnight. However, Calcuasa is not the only thing I'm dosing. So on this tank, I also dose ATI Essentials Plus. This stuff, first thing to mention is that this stuff, I've been using this for ages, this stuff gives you a nice pH boost as well as the Calcuasa. So I'm getting a double pH boost. Now when I started dosing Calcuasa, I was dosing about half as much of this stuff as I actually am now. The original plan was that Calcuasa would save me a bit of money. But as it turned out, I started dosing Calcuasa, my pH went up through the roof, 
Semicore started growing more, so they needed more uh, ATI Essentials Plus. So I dose uh, 100, currently 100 milliliters per day of that stuff, which is actually quite a lot uh, to supplement my lovely Kalkwasa. Now that stuff also has trace elements in it, so I am technically dosing trace elements, and I do a 10% weekly water change every week without fail because I'm a good boy. So there is some addition of trace element going on in this tank, but apart from that, I don't really add an awful lot of other trace elements, with the exception of manganese and iodine. So I have just two single head dosing pumps that dose manganese and iodine. I dose one milliliter of this stuff per day, so very, very little indeed. Iodine is always still low on my ICP test, same for manganese, but that's all I dose. I don't dose anything else in terms of trace elements. Magnesium is worth talking about because my magnesium has always been absolutely fine on this tank. The last time I did an ICP test, it was 1280, which for me is absolutely spot on. But I did have an ICP test that came back in the last couple of days that listed magnesium at 1240. Bloody cat's back. So uh, with magnesium down to 1240, that is a little bit low. So it might mean that I need to start dosing magnesium at some point. Now I'm not convinced that that's a completely accurate test result and I did a manual test on all three tanks yesterday with the Red Sea Magnesium test kit but that came back at all around the 1500 parts per million mark which I think is probably a false reading. But either way as far as I'm concerned if my tank looks good and my cars look good I'm not going to start messing around with magnesium levels just yet but if I were to decide that I need to dose magnesium at some point I'll just buy a bottle of the Red Sea uh, foundations magnesium a single bottle does everything I can then add a single head dosing pump and it will take care of all my magnesium needs and before I finish up it is worth pointing out that although this is a much more complicated setup of Kalkwasa with a very expensive Kalkwasa stirrer instead of just a basic container and dosing two part and a couple of trace elements as well this tank is an SPS dominated tank, actually Aquapora dominated, with a ton of grown out corals. It's five years old, so it is far more advanced than my other tanks. So it's perhaps unsurprising that I have to dose a few more things. But that is everything I have to tell you about Kalkwasa dosing on my tanks. So let's head back up to the studio and we'll wrap up. The last thing I need to tell you about is salinity swings. Now, because on my main tank, I dose a full day's worth of evaporation over about 13 or 14 hours, there is a tiny difference in salinity between when I start dosing Kalkwasa and when I finish. But I've measured it and it is less than 0.2 parts per thousand, i.e. it starts at 35 parts per thousand and it finishes at above 34.8 parts per thousand. Now, if you're just using a normal salinity refractometer, you won't even notice the difference on the gauge. Age. but if you use something like a digital salinity pen like the Hanna Checker you might notice a difference if you test at the exact right time. I don't find that makes any difference to the tank whatsoever and such a small difference like that in salinity really shouldn't have any impact at all on the corals and that's the main thing. But if you're concerned about that and you don't want to swing just dose Kalkwasser over 24 hours and as long as you're not dosing more than your daily rate of evaporation you will be absolutely fine. Now I am of course a huge advocate of Kalkwasser and I've made an entire playlist of videos that you can check out next and if you enjoyed this more informal style of video make sure you subscribe to the Reef Talk extra channel and I'll catch you next time.